LED, QLED, OLED, mini LED, micro LED, so many LEDs. Hey, if you're confused about all the different TV types out there, I get it. I've been at this for over 23 years and all those acronyms still make my head spin. Not to worry though, I'm about to explain every TV type in terms that are super easy to understand. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and I suppose this video was a long time coming. I'm super excited to create this sort of crash course that explains every TV type, what makes them work and therefore how they are different, a few advantages and disadvantages to each. Also, you can make more informed purchase decisions or, you know, maybe you wanna pocket some knowledge to pull out at a cocktail party. I don't know, maybe that's just my life. Anyway, for those TV enthusiasts out there who are just here for some fun, maybe to see if I screw anything up, uh, or for anyone who might be worried that I'm about to get deep in the technical weeds and lose you, just understand that I'm gonna make this the most understandable guide I know how, which will involve intentionally not getting into the weeds and just providing the most essential information. And from there, if you'll want a deeper dive, well, I'll make some new videos doing that as well if you want me to. Which brings me to my final talking point before diving in. If you have questions or want to request a video, the comment section down below is the place to do it. I love reading your comments. Well, <laughs> most of them. Plus it helps me meet you where your needs are. So get typing and while you're down there, slap this video with a like, maybe subscribe if you do like and want to see more. Business done, now let's do this. So to understand where we are and where we're going, it helps a lot to know where we've been, right? So let's take a quick trip back in time, work our way through modern day, and then maybe take a peek into the crystal ball and see what might be coming in the near future. With that in mind, we'll start with the CRT TV, also known as the Tube TV. This is what started it all, and we were all pretty happy with it for, oh, a little over 65 years. Yeah, the first CRT TV was made in 1934 by Telefunken in Germany. And these TVs evolved from black and white to color, from tiny to relatively large, and eventually were phased out around the year 2000, give or take. They used a cathode ray tube, hence CRT, to beam photons at a screen that was coated with phosphors to make a picture. They were very heavy relative to their size, and as we later learned, not particularly great for the environment. Now, along with the CRT TV, we also later got the rear projection TV, which back in their day were more simply known as big screen TVs. These huge boxes used three color light cannons to project an image on a screen from behind, hence rear projection. And while they provided a very big picture, they were generally a huge pain in the ass because you had to keep the three light cannons in perfect alignment or convergence, or you got this blurry rainbow looking image and also they weren't especially bright. The contrast was terrible, but we loved it because they were huge and made it feel like being at the movies at home. Then came the plasma TV and along with it, the term flat screen TV. And this is when TVs basically divorced the four by three square like aspect ratio and moved squarely into the 16 by nine rectangular screen shape. Moved squarely into a rectangle? That didn't come out the way I meant it to. They went from squares to rectangles, okay? Anyway, plasma TVs had tiny little pixel pockets of gas in the screen. And when you put electricity to that gas, the gas turned into plasma and lit up phosphors. And I mean, plasma TVs were about as futuristic as it got at the time. This whole flat screen TV thing was a big deal. And even though all TVs today are flat screens, that term still kind of holds on. But the flat screen part of the plasma became kind of a distraction from what was really cool about the technology. It was an emissive display. So, okay, time for a very quick terminology explainer because this is gonna matter as we go forward. An emissive display is a screen whose picture comes from each pixel lighting up individually. A transmissive display, for the purposes of this discussion, uh, is one that has a backlight, or a light system at the back of the TV that has to shine through a bunch of layers in order to get lit up pixels. As you can imagine, transmissive displays, ones with some sort of backlight, tend to be thicker, while emissive displays, which don't need any backlight at all, tend to be thinner. Anyway, when last we left our new friend, the Plasma TV, it was the flat panel pioneer, but 
A lot of work was being done with LCD screens to make them usable for TV applications. LCD TVs were also flat panels, but they were way, way lighter, easier to move around, and generally considered the coolest thing ever to hit the TV market because they were a piece of cake to mount on the wall. Now, at first, LCD TVs had a compact fluorescent light bulb in the back, shining through all those different layers so that you got a nice image on the screen. And they were pretty great. They got brighter than plasma TVs and were just generally so cool that the public didn't really notice that they couldn't produce blacks very well, or at all. Things that were supposed to be black were really just kind of a milky gray, but nobody cared because look how cool it is. But then someone figured out that using the same kind of light bulb in our TVs that we used in our lamps was antiquated, and that is when the LED came into play. We ditched the light bulbs for LEDs, and suddenly the race to make the thinnest possible TV was on. But also, LEDs could get a lot brighter than old school light bulbs, so these so-called LED TVs were all the rage for multiple reasons, and they still are today. Now keep in mind, this was still an LCD TV with a backlight, it's just that the backlight changed to LED. So we started calling them LED TVs instead of LCD TVs. Much to the annoyance, by the way, of dudes like me. I am also annoyed at the term Instapot, but that's, I'm just gonna leave that alone. I already did that rant. Okay, so now, at this point, we are more or less at modern day. We've got LED TVs, we have plasma TVs, and then along comes OLED. This was actually about 11 years ago, almost modern day. Anyway, OLED stands for Organic Light Emitting Diode. And in many ways, they were like a plasma TV, but instead of using gas, they used organic compounds that would light up when you put electricity to them. OLED TVs were way lighter and ridiculously thin because they didn't need phosphors or even glass to contain everything. They were also quite a bit brighter than plasma TVs, if not quite as bright as LED TVs. And the colors were unlike anything we'd seen on a TV before because the red, green, and blue light that they made were more exact so you could come up with all these new color combinations. And since then, OLED TVs have been at the forefront of TV tech, routinely winning Best TV Awards year after year from just about everyone. Also, they started out really expensive, and even though they've come down in price over time, they're still expensive compared to many LCD-based TVs. Anyway, OLED TVs were so superior in just about every way except perceived motion, that plasma TVs died a very quick and rather unceremonious death. Rip plasma. I still have one though, by the way. The story goes that LG was the only OLED panel producer around, so they pretty much owned OLED entirely until just last year. I mean, you could get a Panasonic uh, or a Sony or a Vizio OLED TV, but LG, made the panels. Samsung, meanwhile, was tired of LG cleaning their clock with this OLED business. Samsung and LG, if you're not aware, are bitter South Korean rivals. I mean, to many of us, it's kind of funny, but it is no laughing matter to them. Corporate espionage is a real thing. Anyway, Samsung was like, you know what? We know our LED LCD TVs are brighter and we're getting better and better at the black levels. We just need to take the color to the next level so we can claim that our TVs are better than OLED TVs and then we'll get a bunch of other brands on board with using it and then it'll be everyone against LG. And thus the QLED TV or QLED TV was created. The Q in QLED stands for quantum dots. Quantum dots are tiny nanoparticles that glow with great efficiency when you shine light on them. And Samsung uses them to make its LED backlights even more powerful. So QLED TVs got brighter, more colorful with brighter colors. And then Samsung marketed the crap out of QLED and said, you know, anyone else can do this if they want to. You can use the term QLED too. Let's just take the TV market over with these things. Well, that didn't exactly work because as bright and colorful as QLED was, it still had this one Achilles heel that reviewers and critics like me just could not get over. And that was backlight blooming, halo, and generally not great black levels. So OLED being an emissive display is more or less perfect in those areas. Those are all transmissive display ones with a backlight problem. So then how do we make the backlight better? Mini LED. Yes, let's take the array of backlights that we're using in QLED TVs and make them way tinier and then use way more of them. We will master black levels, eliminate blooming and halo through sheer brute force of numbers. 
And so we have the mini LED TV. It's still an LCD TV, it's still backlit, it's just a much more refined backlighting system. Also, quantum dots are still involved. So they are mini LED QLED TVs. I know, I know, I'm sorry, don't shoot the messenger. Okay, so let's just like frame this as in where we are today. So we have LED TVs, which are decent quality TVs that are ridiculously affordable, but don't have especially great performance when it comes to color, contrast, and motion. Then we have QLED TVs, which are more premium with higher overall brightness, more accurate color, as well as brighter color, decent motion resolution, and generally solid contrast and backlight control. But you still get a little halo effect or blooming around bright objects on dark backgrounds. Then we have mini LED QLED TVs, which are at the top of the LCD TV or transmissive TV food chain. These are the most premium LCD based TVs. They can get incredibly bright, have excellent HDR performance and the best contrast and backlight control available, along with vivid colors, and very good color accuracy. Still, they're backlit. So you may see backlight fluctuations, a tiny little bit of blooming or halo, but usually not much. Now, as the industry is increasingly embracing mini LED backlighting as the norm, we may see more variations in how mini LED TVs perform. Right now, they're mostly just premium, but generally they're the best you can buy when it comes to a backlit TV. Then in the other camp, we have OLED, which requires no backlight at all, offers excellent contrast, near perfect black levels, incredible color accuracy and saturation, and can get sufficiently bright for most situations. These have been and continue to be the preferred TV for dedicated movie rooms or entertainment spaces where you can control the lighting in the room, or if you just want the best looking TV. But now we have two new kinds of OLED TVs to get familiar with. There is the new MLA OLED and QD OLED. Both of these are basically brighter OLED TVs and they come at a premium as regular OLED TVs continue to drop in price. I'll have another video soon on how MLA OLED and QD OLED are different and what the advantages and disadvantages are for each. But to keep things simple, just understand that OLED now comes in three flavors, all of them very premium. They're standard OLED, MLA OLED, and QD OLED. So if we're adding them all up, that's six types of TVs to choose from. So, okay, we're done now, right? We're good for a bit, nothing more to worry about learning? Well, yeah, you're good until next year, maybe. Yeah, sorry, TVs are still evolving. So if you want to have the latest and greatest, we've got a couple more technologies coming down the pipe in the coming years. Slowly making its way onto the scene now is micro LED. You're welcome. Now, you might think this is another backlit display because it says LED, where the backlights are even tinier than mere mini LED, but that's not the case. Like OLED, uh, micro LED is another kind of emissive display. It makes its own light, no backlight. But it is the brightest emissive display of all. So it has the perfect blacks and amazing contrast, but that contrast is cranked up to 11 because micro LED can get so incredibly bright, like almost blindingly bright. The downside to micro LED for now, and the reason you're not likely to see it for sale on the floor of your preferred electronic store is that it is super expensive and it's really hard to get 4K resolution at normal screen sizes because the pixels aren't as tiny as they are on the other types of TVs we talked about. The other interesting thing about micro LED displays, at least for now, is that they're modular, which has its upsides and downsides. See, again, just for now anyway, micro LED panels are these smaller squares, and you can stitch them together to make a display of varying sizes and shapes. That's flexibility, and that's a good thing. But the downside is that there are seams. And while you can't really see these seams between these panels when the TVs are super bright, at least not from a normal viewing distance, you can see them when they're dimmer, at least if you look closely enough. Now, until this last January, most micro LED displays were basically the size of an entire wall but they're being scaled down to normal TV sizes like 55 inch and 65 inch screen sizes. So we'll see where micro LED goes this year, but I still think we're a year or two out until these become competitive with QLED or OLED. And finally, if you dig deep enough while doing TV research, you could hear about emissive quantum dot displays. 
These go by different acronyms. I'm not gonna run through them all, but the idea is that the quantum dots that are currently used to enhance existing TV technologies might become an emissive display tech all on their own. And if they do, wow, they could be really amazing. But like all new TV tech, we'll wanna see how they perform and we'll need them to come down in price for a few years before you would ever wanna consider buying one, unless you're just made of money and like to show off having the latest and greatest stuff, which if that's you, no judgment, just, just saying. So that's my little history lesson and state of the TV industry all wrapped up into one video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you need to refresh your memory on anything, we'll have timestamps down below for each TV type so that you can easily review. Thanks as always for watching everyone. Hope you found this video both fun and informative. If you did, and even if you didn't, would you let me know down in the comments below? Then I'll know that you actually watched the whole thing and I'd like to be able to say thanks. Don't forget to like and subscribe while you're at it. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, here's two other videos I think you might like.